In this video, I'm going to talk about 4x leverage, margin requirements, and why it's important to understand if you're going to size your trades properly. Leverage essentially refers to the percentage of funds that you are allowed to borrow from your broker, and it is usually stated in a ratio like 50 to 1 or 200 to 1. But what it means is that in the case of 50 to 1, for every $1 that you put up, your broker will essentially let you borrow 50 more. So what this means to you as a trader is that when you are trading with a higher leverage, you are able to control a vastly larger fund than what you originally invested. And that can be really great if you have a trade going your direction, one that you're making a profit from. But if you are on the wrong side of a trade, what it means is that you can lose a lot of money very quickly, and in some cases, you can lose all of what you have invested and even more. The margin requirement is the actual amount of money that your broker will require for you to put up to initiate a trade. And although the margin requirement is based on what leverage you're trading with, you actually need to know three things before you can accurately calculate what the margin requirement will be for the trade. You need to know what leverage you're trading with. You need to know the actual price on the pair that you are trading at the moment that you take the trade, and you also need to know what size of a trade you're going to make. No matter what leverage you're using in your trading account, the margin requirement for a one lot trade can vary significantly depending on what pair you're trading. Here are two examples. You can see that with the pair of GBP NZD, for one lot at 200 leverage, the margin requirement is $559. But for the same trade of one lot at 200 to 1 leverage, for the NZD USD, the margin requirement is only $353. And this is because of the difference in the total amount of funds that are being controlled by a one lot trade in each of the two pairs. One lot represents 100,000 units of whatever the pair is. So the pair price times 100,000 determines how many dollars are actually being controlled by the one lot trade. Before you make any trade, you should always have a rough idea in your mind of approximately what the margin requirement is going to be for that trade. And as you get more familiar with trading, it will become rather instinctive and you'll just kind of know. But initially, um, you might want to actually do the math on every trade to find out what the margin requirement will be. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just look it up on my website. Just go to MindyYost.com and you will find, I think, the handiest little margin calculator that I've ever seen. Use the drop down arrow to select the leverage that you're using, the trade size that you want, and calculate, and it will generate not only the margin requirement, but the pip value for just about any currency pair that you would want to trade. Use the scroll bar to go down the list to whatever pair you're interested in. Having a good understanding of leverage and margin requirements is important to your trading because it directly affects the number of trades that you can make and the size of trades that you should make if you are going to trade your account in a reasonably safe way. Let's assume that you have a new trading account and you have a balance of $5,000 and you decide to make a one lot trade in Euro USD. 
If you are trading in the United States and have a 50 to 1 leverage, your margin requirement for this trade would be $2,236 or 44.72% of your $5,000 balance in your account. Now, when you close this trade, whether you close it for a profit or a loss, you will get the margin requirement back into your account to use again. But the problem is, with a 50 to 1 leverage, if you just did a one lot trade and spent almost half of your account balance on the margin for just one trade, it doesn't leave you a lot of money in your account to make additional trades, especially if they start going the wrong direction. But as you can see from this graphic, the higher the leverage, the lower the margin requirement, which means the more money that you have in your account to use for either other trades or to ride out negative equity in trades before they become profitable. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that you can make at least five trades at any one time and that all of those trades could go up to 250 pips negative before you would run out of usable margin and thus incur a margin call. Now, I'm not saying that you should ever allow your account to margin call or that you should allow any one trade to go 250 pips negative before you close the trade. All I'm saying is that when you leave that much cushion on every trade, it will give you the time to make a plan on what to do with trades that are going seriously underwater. Using the example of a $5,000 balance in the account, if that is divided by 5, we can see that that would mean that each trade should not be allotted more than $1,000 of the account balance. And this $1,000 needs to represent both the margin requirement and the 250 pip cushion for the trade. What you're going to find is that in general, if you are trading with a leverage of 50 to 1, you should not make any of your trades larger than two mini lots each. If you're trading with a 200 to 1 leverage, which is the most common, you should not make any of your trades larger than three mini lots each. And if you're trading with a 500 to 1 leverage, you should not make your trades larger than four mini lots. If you stay within these parameters on trade size, what you'll find is that it will have a very good impact on your trading account overall. The amount of money that you will make on each winning trade that you close will probably be less than what you're making now, but the chances of you having to close trades for a loss will be greatly reduced, and overall the impact on your account will be positive. The other things that are important in trading your account is to have a coherent trading strategy and one that has a, a proven history of providing more positive trades than negative trades and then to also have a plan on what to do to mitigate the negative impact of a trade that does go underwater in your account. And I will leave those subjects to future videos. But thank you for watching, and I hope that this video has helped you with your trading.